Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In this Ruby snack number 20, I will be setting up environmental variables with Figaro. It's actually really easy. What you'll learn in this episode is how to install the Capistrano Figaro YML gem, which also installs Figaro for you. We'll fill in the application YML with your variables, and then you deploy to the server. If you want to code along, you'll just need a virtual private server set up and Capistrano already set up in your app. You can check out these other videos from my Deploy to Digital Ocean series, number 14 where we set up Capistrano, and number 17 where we deploy to production. In this video, we're going to correct some of the craziness I had to put in to deploy because of an error with devise. I had been putting the variables manually into the dot profile file on the server. Well, Figaro makes that a lot easier, and I feel a little silly for not doing it first, but sometimes it's good to go with the manual way before using a gem. So let's get started. We'll first take a quick look at the documentation for the Capistrano Figaro YML gem. You can see a little bit about installation, setup, and usage, which I will take you through. It explains how you might handle if a new config is added to the Figaro file and how to tell your team. And then a little bit about how it works by copying that YML file to your server. Let's get the ball rolling with installing the gem. So simply in your gem file in the development group, you will add gem Capistrano Figaro YML. Then you'll bundle install. Then we just need to add to the cap file to require Capistrano backslash Figaro YML. Here we are in our app, in our text editor. And we will scroll on down and add this to the bottom of the development group and save. And then in the terminal, we will bundle install. Easy peasy. Then in the cat file, we'll go here and enter the require statement and save. Next up, we need to edit our application YML. You'll create a new file in the config folder called application YML and you'll need to add it to get ignore. This is very important. You don't want to share all your secrets with the world, so do not commit it. Then we'll fill in the variables per environment. Let's make that new file, config, new file. I like to save these right away. So controls S and application dot YML and save. Now, just to show you, if you do get status, you'll see that it's there, it's looking for it. Uh-oh. So we need to be sure to edit our get ignore file. I'll just scroll to the bottom and add that particular file, which is config application.yml. So now when we head back We'll get status again. It sees that get ignore was changed, but it's no longer trying to track the application YML. Here is an example of an application YML file. You can have certain default variables that will be used in every environment, and then usually test and development inherit from the default. Then you can have your particular environment. For example, you may have a staging environment, especially if you're doing e-commerce, you're probably going to have different passwords and things to use the payment processor in a staging environment, not actually transferring funds. Then in production, you will have what the real deal is. For this example, I've taken out the long strings for secret key base just to make it easier to read. Now let's take a look at the file in the real life so you can see that it would have all of those long strings for all of those different secret keys. You want to be sure that there aren't extra spaces and things because YMLs are very picky. Now let's go ahead and deploy to the server. You will copy that file to the server with this very awesome simple line bundle exec cap production setup. You may or may not need bundle exec on following the documentation. Then you could continue with other deployment tasks. So whenever you change this file, you'll want to upload it first with this command before you deploy the new code. Let's give it a shot. I will paste in this command and oh, it gave me an error. It will do that if it sees something wrong in the file. So I've looked and seen, uh-oh, I had a tab instead of spaces. You have to have spaces, not tabs. 
So you can highlight your file to see where you might be going wrong if you've copy pasted it from somewhere else. So you'll see I have a couple of places. So I'll go and fix those up and then let's try again. Oh, and I missed something at line 21. So we'll go back and look at line 21. It needs a space. It's very particular, but you'll see that it tells you when something's wrong. So let's try again and here it goes and it's copied. So if you saw the other episode, you'll see how this was so much easier. I do recommend using Figaro to handle your variables. I've been using it on a couple of projects. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, click that big red button and go ahead and subscribe. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com by clicking on that lovely ruby and you can sign up to get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. I hope you enjoyed this very quick ruby snack and I'll see you next time.